First of all, thank you everyone for coming here this evening. Thank you so much. Um, I want to start by thanking a few people. Without them, this book wouldn't have been possible. Uh, first of all, Mr. Hussain Zaidi, uh, the man who relentlessly pushed me uh, week after week, month after month, after I came back from Canada where he was being treated. And I remember what Hussain told me. He said that, you know, you've been through this as parents, um, this information that you've had, that you've got on your side. If one family, if one parent, if one child fighting cancer can have this information on his or her side, it will be battle won for all of them and for you. And also Bilal, um, you know, my partner in crime, I wouldn't have been able to do it without him. Uh, he really pushed me, uh, dig down into those painful memories uh, back in 2014 in January and, and document them in this book. Uh, so thank you, Bilal. And also Mindy, uh, the entire team at Penguin, um, it wouldn't have been possible without them. They've really given the book the kind of exposure uh, that it needed to get across uh, to all, uh, to everyone uh, in the hour of need. And also, I think next month there will be a Hindi version and a Marathi version uh, that will be launched. So looking forward to that. So let me just take you back through the incident um, two years back and tell you exactly how the book eventually happened. It was uh, January the 13th, uh, 2014, when uh, as a family our life was completely uh, wrecked. Um, it was a, a casual brunch that me, my wife and my son had gone for uh, to Taj Land's End. And it was there where we detected some uh, abnormal symptoms in our son. And uh, we rushed him to the hospital. There was his head pediatrician there and the uh, tests began. Uh, you know, there was a conversation that we had two weeks back. We didn't want, uh, we were delaying a simple blood test for the hemoglobin. Um, because we didn't want our child to go through physical trauma when a needle went into his arm. And here in this hospital, there was needle after needle jabbed into his arm, uh, and doctors trying to get to the bottom of the problem. Anyways, the nightmare of the day ended. We went back home, and I went on to the internet um, to do my own research. And I typed out his symptoms, and what I was confronted with uh, on one website uh, really tore my heart apart. It said uh, the dreaded C word. And Below that, there were a list of other diseases. And I remember going to sleep that night. Before that, I prayed to God and I said that, please don't let this be cancer. Please don't let this be cancer. But next day, uh, our worst fears manifested. Um, his chest x-ray and his uh, blood test were normal. But in his sonography, there was uh, a tumor the size of a season ball that was growing on top of his left kidney. And um, I remember seeing it on the sonography machine, this dark gray haze. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, that's a Wilms tumor. It's a very rare case of kidney cancer that happens to a minuscule percentage of kids um, of all, all pediatric cancers, roughly around 2 to 3%, and he happened to be a part of that unfortunate percentage of kids. If you've had someone close to you being diagnosed with this disease, you know what the next couple of weeks, months, and possibly years are like. You're hearing things like staging, pathology, chemotherapy, remission, um, radiation, and it was very frightening for us back then because we didn't know the staging of the cancer. Uh, and even these cancers are divided into two uh, subgroups, which is uh, favorable and unfavorable. Uh, God forbid a child has unfavorable, the chemotherapy does not work. Um, but God was, I guess, very kind. In the next week after the surgery, we realized it was a favorable cancer. And we as parents and family, we fought, we fought hard for Seven months, we took him to Toronto for his uh, treatment, um, chemotherapy. And through this entire phase, and this is how the book actually started, somewhere it started uh, seeding in my mind, that there was this fear in me. And there's a fear that in most of cancer patients and parents, um, a fear that when the chemotherapy is being administered, uh, you feel the job is being done and that something is fighting the disease. But what happens once that stops? Uh, doctors and oncologists didn't give me the right answer. They didn't give me the answer I wanted to hear. Uh, they told me that, you know, take the chemotherapy, fingers crossed it won't come back. Because there is recurrence in cancer, there is a five-year survival rate. Uh, so I started doing my own research and uh, turned out uh, some great information which was going to help us out was that uh, roughly 90% of cancers were lifestyle related and uh, a small percentage of cancers were genetic which means that we could have fought this, we can fight it, 
and there are a lot of things that come into play. There is um, obviously lifestyle is what when you come to cancer, when you come to uh, terms with why cancer happens. The air we breathe, the food we eat, the water we drink, the stress levels, all of this contributes to an abnormality in the body. And we put Ayan on a very, very good diet. He's probably the only six-year-old who has a vegetable smoothie. I can't have it. So he, he really, uh, I guess, worked his way himself uh, to cure himself of this disease. And, um, you know, it just, it's, statistically they say that roughly by 2030, there will be four and five people who will have cancer. And that's a very alarming rate for our country. Uh, that means probably everyone in this room, at some point of a time, with our given diets and lifestyle, are candidates to get this disease. So I felt once Hussein came to me and Bilal came to me and they said that, you know, you have to get this information out to people. And if it touches one life and gets the information to them, it will be uh, a great accomplishment. And this is not just for cancer patients. This is for people for prevention. Because even we as a family felt that this could never happen to us. Cancer is something that happens to someone else. But I have news for you. It comes knocking on your door without a warning. And sometimes it gets very late. So I would, I would advise everyone to go out and read this book. We have uh, put the last three chapters, which uh, are about what you can eat and what you can avoid uh, to reduce your probability of getting this disease. Something that oncologists will not tell you. Uh, I have nothing against them. They have saved my son's life because chemotherapy was given to him. But uh, the fact is that food does not come into their domain. It cannot be patented. So th that's why pharma companies will never say, if you have curcumin, for example, it can help you fight heart disease and cancer. So all these things have been documented in this book. So I hope everyone gets to read it. And um, yeah, over to Bilal. I think exactly or slightly over a year ago, at this very place, uh, we had launched my book and exactly the three people. Today we have a little addition and that's Ayan because of, because of whom this book is possible. I think uh, Ayan serves as an inspiration to pretty much everyone out here in this room. He's so cheerful. He's just like the coolest kid you can be around. Uh, so the book had actually started, I think, sir, a uh, year and a half ago. Yeah. yeah. When sir had actually met him and discussed it, and after that, I think they decided that I'm fit to write the book, which was a big. Uh, it it was a big opportunity for me, but it also is a it, it was a big responsibility as well, considering the fact that I had to tell the story of someone who who I haven't been in and. Uh, Doing that was was more was easier than I thought it would be because he uh, literally uh, he was pretty cooperative. He would uh, tell me almost everything in detail. Even if I missed something out, he would relive that moment, and I would actually see him choking up at certain instances because it just can't be easy having to go through all of that all over again. So I think it's a big big uh, it's a great thing that he's done by getting this book out and uh, sharing his experiences, something that not everyone will be open to speak about, but uh, not just experiences, but also certain things he came across which he felt was needed, uh, was, was uh, imperative to document in the book. So having said that, the book is not a grim retelling of just what happened, but it, but it, uh, it is also a, uh, he, he retraces his journey as an actor, which is, pretty entertaining to read. It was entertaining for me to write as well. And uh, I think all in all the book will inspire you and educate you. But at the same time, it will leave you with a smile in the end. And, I, and if that's what happens, I think we're successful at having put this book out. All those uh, small uh, episodes that you went through while you were writing this book or when you were going to in US and in India? Um, you know, first things first, when we we decided that this is going to be documented in this book, um, I thought it's going to be an extremely painful journey to relive all of that once again. Uh, in some ways, moments brought about uh, you know feelings of nostalgia because, like Bilal said, the film is the the book is not just about the episode of cancer; it's about retracing 
my family and how I was in college, school, my grandmother, my father, everyone, the family. Um, but apart from that, I think it was very therapeutic. Uh, it's like it's like counseling, you know. There are feelings that are there. You've been through them. They're painful. But the moment you talk about them or you bend them down, it uh, just finds some kind of closure. So I think this book really, you know, when I went through reading it uh, at one stretch, once it was done, it again uh, was extremely therapeutic to know that the worst is behind us. And uh, fascinating because we as a family unit could actually get through this and we could fight this disease. And it get, takes me back to the first day, the hope with which we started off, um, where Parveen and me held back our tears um, because we couldn't in front of him. Uh, we had to show and we be this uh, come from a place of strength and t told ourselves that we, we're going to get through this and we're going to make sure nothing happens to our son. So it's just a feeling of accomplishment. Everyone felt that, my family, friends, everyone with the Red Book.